So, um, as I said, today is the birthday of uh, Piranesi, uh, and uh, I'm sorry I begin with, with an email. It's very informal and almost inadequate, but it's the only way I, I was able to find quickly um, this poem I wrote last year uh, on the occasion of 300 years since the birth of this uh, very important um, architect, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll try to, to discuss why uh, I use uh, this uh, this word, uh, important. So I show here lava because it's about fire and I call the poem uh, Pironesi 300. Uh, the the Pironesi, the, the word uh, deriving from, uh, of course, is connected with, with fire. So Pironesi, liberté, égalité, fraternité. But this happened after 1778. That is, it happened after you, Pironesi, died. I wrote uh, intentionally, I modified a little bit uh, the, the name. Uh, I mean, I spelled it differently a little bit as well. Uh, Bastille felt, it is true, but what about the inner Bastille? Carcere, invenzione or not? Are we all prisoners in eternally? Probably with very few exceptions. But what are we to do with the equally eternal big yes? The architects, some of them claim architecture is all about, and you know to whom I'm referring. Is there room for pessimism in architecture? And how come some of those who do believe in the yes admire you, Giovanni Battista? Paul Fricks asked himself, what is architecture? He answered, yes. But maybe you, Giovanni Battista, would have answered to the very same question, no. How is it? Is architecture a yes or a no? The construction I felt represented, symbolized an obvious no. Although looking at it from a different angle, maybe itself was a yes. A yes to fury, to the tornado, to the turbulence. A yes to conflict, to drama, to war. A yes to taking apart, ripping off a yes to destruction. But didn't you also, Giovanni Battista, ripped off huge structures, maybe in some kind of an anticipation of the fall of Bastille? But again, what about the inner Bastille? Yes, we collapsed the walls of the real one. Yes, liberté, égalité, fraternité. Maybe its revolutionary song be heard, uh, made its revolutionary song be heard everywhere or almost everywhere. Yet the philosopher was probably right. The most important victory is over oneself. And those who tore down the walls of Bastille perhaps didn't tear down the walls of the inner prison, just like the deconstructivists perhaps didn't do it. Perhaps, but we do need both. We do need truth. In the absence of truth, we perish, said Le Corbusier, although himself sometimes didn't tell the truth. Like for those, for example, in those doctored photographs he published in order to sustain graphically his truth. But then what is truth? My truth might not be your truth. And indeed, as George Bernard Shaw said, in a room might not be two people, but six. The one I think you are, the one you think you are, the one you really are, plus the one you think I am, the one I think I am, the one I really am, thus six, and maybe even this number is too low, low and misleading. Your talent as an etcher, Giovanni Battista, was indeed out of this world. Sometimes, although your San, Fran uh, San Francesco was good too, how did you see the world, Giovanni Battista? Did you foresee the disaster? Did you foresee the general ruin? Did you depict the grandeur of dissolution in order to memorialize fall and decline, or in order to increase our inborn appetite for hope, you do move, this is for sure, even if not quite, even not quite innocent people like Mr. Coolhouse, even he likes you. Uh, here again, I played with the word, you probably recognize the one I'm referring to when I wrote Mr. Coolhouse. Even he likes you, that is Ram Coolhouse, Everybody likes you. Who cares you didn't build much and you didn't build significantly? You built with incisions in the steel plate and in ink. Are your, you etchings, are your etchings real? Yes, they are. 
more, more, much more real than many of the so-called real buildings. But are all, build, all buildings real? No, they are not. They are just illusions or delusions. They do not exist, Piranesi, although except through the pollution they provoked. Plus, if architecture does not exist, as Louis Kahn said, what would the difference be between a building, a built building and a drawing? Although, of course, even temporarily, temporarily a building should be confronted with the elements. It is a must, perhaps. You were born in October, halfway in terms of days between Ingels and Le Corbusier. The young Ingels and the even younger Le Corbusier. Le Corbusier said that the real challenge in life is not to remain young, but to become young. Your etchings, Piranesi, show exactly this, becoming. They are about the dynamics of life. If there is a constant, it is the eternal return of the same. Things go up and things go down. Life moves on, but so does death. Ruins are replaced by the new, only for the new to follow, not much later, the same fatidic destiny. But maybe the ruin is not fatidic. The ruin tells us how the building was made. The ruin reminds us of what is to follow. The ruin tempers our vanity, even in the case of the great pharaohs. What happened to Villa Adriana in Tivoli? Ruin. And the wind and the rain and the dust tempests still hid the monolith named Cops. You expre express this fact quite powerfully. You saw and depicted the cemetery, the human cemetery. All is grave or waiting to become grave. Are we to mourn? Maybe. Or maybe we should laugh in roars, since indeed Nietzsche was perhaps right. Only the humans laugh because the humans suffered the most. Did you suffer, Giovanni Battista? Maybe not. Maybe your art was suffice to sublimate the pain. Maybe. We thank you for what you gave us, even if some of your works adorn glittering suburb, suburban kitchen. Or, or maybe especially them, to contrast them, a stove, a refrigerator, a sink, and on the wall, Vedute di Roma, or worse or better, Pestum, the temple of Hera. Yes, that very heavy temple, immensely heavy, because before the Doric, there was just weight, 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 the weight of gravity. The, that cosmic force that haunts us, forcing us to imagine in great fear that we can escape it. But why should we escape the beautiful certitude, maybe the only one that we have, gravity, the force of gravity? It is said that at Pestum, infertile couples, if they spend the night there, become miraculously fertile. What attracted you to Pestum? Maybe the very reasons that attracted chronologically Winkelmann, Goethe, Kahn, all great admirers, uh, admirers of the telluric force of Hera's temple. Kahn said it clearly. For me, Pestum is more important than the Parthenon. I would agree, it is. Although the tourist loves more a polished truth, which might not be a truth at all, than the rough one. But Kahn himself, as we know in certain aspects of his life, lied. We all lie, we are all liars. You lie too, making us believe that there is beauty in ruins, in death. No, there isn't. We should all cry together with you. The end cannot be happy it, if it is to be a ruin. Let's not be delusional. We grow towards becoming ruins and our buildings as well. In between, there is the illusion, delusion named life. We thank you, though, Piranesi, for depicting for us the grandeur of death. We thank you for immortalizing mortality. We thank you for telling us that darkness will follow it will always follow. Or is it the very same darkness that preceded us? Maybe. Maybe the very same darkness in the eternal swing between yesterday, now, tomorrow. But tomorrow will be the next yesterday. And as lovers of symmetry, we might say that yesterday was always, and it might always be another tomorrow. We salute you on your 301st birthday this year. And we hope one day we will meet in that very beyond you yourself, you find yourself in. Now, but what is now? It already passed. 
and Ungaretti steps in whispering, and I got the taste of that winged desire that light represses when he dies. Yes, fire, fire, that very fire Heraclitus thought was the beginning of all things, even of God. That fire that burns everything down, that fire that brings everything up, that pyro that you have carrying in your soul and in your hand, etcher. The fire that warms us, that burns us in the winter of our solitude. Okay, so I end with this um, uh, with this poem I wrote uh, yes uh, last year, and uh, now I'll begin my my presentation, my PowerPoint presentation. And sorry that uh, I read the text from an email, but uh, in uh, in a hurry I couldn't find the PDF I I, I made uh, last year. Anyway, um, let me begin uh, with uh, with a presentation. Piranesi. Uh, this is a portrait of him that he himself uh, uh, is a self-portrait, and uh, he was a great uh, he was a great etcher, one of the greatest. Giovanni Battista Piranesi, Italian pronunciation is this one. Giovanni Battista Piranesi, also known as simply Piranesi, born as you see October fourth, seventeen twenty, that is three hundred one years ago was an Italian classical archaeologist, architect, and artist famous for his etchings of Rome and the fictitious and atmospheric prisons, Le Carceri d'Invenzione. He was the father of Francesco Piranesi, he himself an etcher, and, and he, he contributed to, to, to the later works by, uh, by Giovanni Battista and Laura Piranesi. I, I don't know anything about Laura Piranesi. Piranesi was born in Venice in the parish of uh, Saint, Saint Mose, where he was baptized. His father was a stonemason. His brother Andrea introduced him to Latin literature and ancient Greco Roman civilization. And later he was apprenticed under his uncle Matteo Lucchesi, who was a leading architect in Magistrato dell'Acque the state organization responsible for engineering and restoring historical buildings. I would not go further before I underline again that, um, that, that this man studied Latin literature and ancient Greco-Roman civilization. Now, I don't expect our present to study Latin literature and the, the ancient Greco-Roman civilization, but I do, I do expect you know, the people of our time to pay attention to culture. We are talking about major presences in the field of architecture like Piranesi. You cannot arrive at that level in the absence of culture. You simply cannot. Uh, from 1740, he had an opportunity to work in Rome as a draftsman for Marco Foscarini, the Venetian ambassador of the new Pope anyway, blah, blah, blah. He resided in the Palazzo Venezia and studied under Giuseppe Pazzi, who introduced him to the art of etching and engraving of the city and its monuments. Giuseppe Pazzi found Piranesi's talent was much greater than that of a mere engraver. According to Legrand, Vasi told Piranesi that you are too much of a painter, my friend, to be an engraver. Well, it happened that actually Piranesi became one of the greatest engravers and etchers in the world ever, and certainly in the world of architecture. And maybe that um, disposition towards painting helped him. And now I reflect on the fact that he was born in Venice. Maybe his, uh, his uh, melancholia in a way uh, uh, towards uh, architecture derives from, from being born in Venice. After all, if you are born in Venice, how, how, can you be, how can you believe in, uh, in eternity? Although, you know, as, uh, as uh, a poet said, um, eternity could manifest itself also through what? Uh, uh, through, through ephemerality. And uh, Venice somehow uh, magically survives, although it is a very vulnerable, essentially a very vulnerable uh, city. Uh, I launched a competition, um, I think, I'm not sure, uh, last year, uh, I guess, for a house for Piranesi, and this is the short text, and I'll show you a few 
works we received. He was born in 1720, almost three centuries ago. Now I launched it before last year, but he's still very much alive in our minds, hearts, from Jennifer Bloomer to Rem Kolhas to the heavy stone uh, Voltrix likes uh, uh, Piranesi as well, uh, very much. The heavy stone seems our contemporary somehow. So does the imperial arch broken by time and the elements, if not by words, fire and other human contributions to life, death. Why is Piranesi still our contemporary? Is it just nostalgia? Is it just the inner prison we are still unable to escape? Is it his amazing draftsmanship? We ask you to design a house for him, a house for Giovanni Battista Piranesi, a house for the one who invented the dark dreams of architecture, our dreams. This competition is organized by a partnership between Via Piranesi, Serele, uh, Milan, um, uh, Italy, and the Carch. Anyway, uh, uh, I'll just show some works, although I have others and I received, because I think I launched this competition twice. Yes, I love Piranesi, it's true, and maybe that's why I'm so unprepared for the presentation today, because uh, it's hard to talk uh, you know, in an uh, you know organized way about uh, about those one loves. Anyway, I'll just show you some images, and you can see if you are interested. You can you can see the works and many other works, not many, but other works on ecarch.us. Um, yes, people send works even if we didn't promise prizes or didn't promise anything, uh, and not even certificates of participation, but they sent they sent works. And Piranesi stands probably for, for many things. You know, this is the power of, of creativity that even if you, I mean, he did build a few things, but uh, they are not as relevant as his graphic work, but his graphic work makes you, I mean, graphic. It's more than just, Graphisms, his work is 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 uh, is, is thought. Uh, invite you to reflection, and uh, and he's, he's he's a great catalyst. If you if you plunge into his work, he's provoking you to 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 see to see the world in 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 in, in richer ways uh, somehow. And these people who send their works uh, were stirred up by uh, uh, by him. I mean, imagine a building had this elevation like uh, this um, architect uh, suggests through this, uh, through this image. Uh, this, I don't know what it is, House for Invention for the Giovanni Battista Piranesi. Uh, this was sent by um, an architect uh, uh, living in Paris, if I'm not mistaken. He actually uh, inspired himself from uh, an important villa designed by Vignola. Um, Anyway, and 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 he, and he he transformed it into a prison, by the way of um, of Piranesi and his uh, carcere in Divenzione uh, series. And I I when I launch these competitions, I say like this: we we welcome any work, any size, any format. Thus, people send uh, all kinds of works. Anyway, we move forward. We are all trapped, I would say, in the inner prison. I am, and I think everybody is. We don't realize it because freedom is, is of an internal order. Uh, it is of an external order as well, of course, but uh, in good measure is of an inner order. You know, it doesn't matter you are so-called free uh, externally. If you are entrapped internally, you are still not a free man or a free person. Now we go to um, Piranesi engravings here. I have the, the text in Romanian and I apologize, but gravur means engravings. Uh, this is from the, uh, uh, from the Pestum series. This is, uh, this is a series, I forgot, around 20, 20 large uh, size etchings. Within this series, there are also some uh, that were uh, etched uh, uh, by uh, Francesco, his son. So uh, this uh, I had visited. I visited the uh, I, I visited Hera's temple uh, at Pestum, and I have to say, from all the buildings I saw in my life, and I didn't really see so many, and I never traveled to Asia, to China, to Japan, to India. No. 
But what from everything I saw in my life until now, I have to say, nothing moved me as much as the temple of Hera at Pestum. Nothing. Now it's true. It was also the oldest building I saw because it was uh, about, it is about 2,500 years old. But the power of these pre-Doric columns is unbelievable. It, it's a magical place. So if the pandemic goes away, and if you arrive in, in, in Italy, please take the train or whatever to the south of Italy. It's not far away from uh, Pompeii either. Uh, uh, and see Pestum, because this place was magical for Louis Kahn, was magical for Goethe, was magical for Winkelmann, and I'm sure it was magical for many people. I have beautiful pictures I took. Uh, that time I was photographing with, uh, you know, uh, with an uh, analog camera. I have slides. They are not here. They are somewhere in a different city. But uh, I show pictures that I found on the web. Um, this, these etchings by, by Piranesi are very, very moving because you know, they are not just illustrations of, of, of you know, uh, uh, these magnificent ruins. They are actually expression, expressions of, of a soul, his own soul, this man in his best works. Not all his works are as moving as um, the few that I'm referring to, but in his best works, I think he touches upon the soul of life itself and the soul of eternity somehow through his ruins, actually. These ruins testify about the, 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 the majesty, but also the, the tragedy in a way of life. There is beauty in tragedy somehow. I mean, these ruins, yes, they are ruins, but uh, because they are beautiful, and if indeed Dostoevsky was right that beauty will sell, save the world, then these etchings also are saving the world. Uh, and uh, uh, this is the role of art. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I do think we need badly uh, a different spirit in the world. We need contemplation, we need spirit, we need exaltation. We need uh, that inner energy and that doesn't come from money or businesses or uh, little lucrative uh, interests. No, it doesn't, they don't. And so that's why the, we need the artists, and that's why we need Piranesi, and that's why we should tell him happy birthday, Giovanni Battista Piranesi, today, on the 4th of October, 301 years since he was born. Um, uh, you know, I, I show these pictures, but uh, really, compared to what I felt when I was there, they, they are not sufficient. Uh, um, anyway. This, this, these are some of the, of, the, of the plates that he etched. And now we go to uh, others uh, from Rome, because he has a large uh, series, uh, Vedute di, Rome, di Roma, uh, um, which, which uh, equally is impressive, but in different way. It's a little bit more illustrative in this series than in the, in the Hera series, which is he died at 58. And, and that series was done in the later part of his life. So it's possible that he was contemplating his, his own, uh, you know, uh, uh, exiting uh, life as we know it. He has a huge uh, oeuvre. He drew and drew and drew and etched and etched and etched. And yes, he was very successful. He was not an artist who didn't have success. Maybe his uh, etchings uh, traveled everywhere in Europe and maybe beyond Europe. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, strangely, even the people with my mundane interests loved Piranesi. So they hang his etchings in the kitchen, designer kitchen or otherwise, um, maybe because it's about the passage of time, about nostalgia. They, uh, they are humor, humane, humane ruins. Or maybe in contrast, in contrast with these ruins, you feel good about yourself because you, in contrast with something that is, um, you know, deformed by time and uh, damaged, you feel healthy in contrast. I don't know exactly the psychological mechanism. 
But one thing is for sure, what goes up goes down in architecture. Let's not imagine that our works will last. No, they will not last. They will last for a while, but if these huge imperial buildings from ancient Rome didn't last, how could we imagine that our buildings with Shidrach walls with, uh, you know, how we build today can last? Well, they will last for a while, but not very long. Although I have to say, I have seen skyscrapers in New York City, uh, almost 100 years old, and uh, they still look, uh, they still look fine. So maybe, maybe certain, uh, certain, a certain number of our buildings will last, but this we don't know. Uh, we can imagine, of course, that in, in time, the elements will devour even the most uh, ambitious buildings. But when I look at this etching, I tremble because, because indeed there is beauty in ruins. You know, it's like a mirror that is placed in front of us and it shows us the future. Uh, and uh, it's also, it shows that nature in the end has the upper hand. Nature cannot be, cannot be defeated. Uh, whatever some might think cannot be defeated. In the end, you see the, the plants, the, the green uh, emerges from wherever there is a space to emerge. And that's not a bad thing, actually. Uh, was it Goethe or anyway, some, some people thought that death is another way through which nature renews herself or itself. So seen in this way, the, the revenge of nature, the coming back of nature, is some kind of a new yes address to life. Nature is renewing herself uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, the human work and the human life, even if ephem ephemeral, uh, is, is a way of, uh, of uh, helping, in a way, nature to renew herself. I like this etching very much. Uh, it's one of, of uh, it's one that I like a lot because here architecture almost becomes nature. It becomes it's 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 it, the building almost becomes uh, uh, you know uh, a plant somehow. You know it, it's it, it's magical and I I think he this this work and others he did reflect his um, I would say his soul his mind, his brain, is uh, uh, this man didn't just illustrate. These are not illustrations. These are uh, uh, expressions of his inner world taking, um, uh, you know, the, the subject of what he was drawing and etching as a pretext almost for expressing. And this is what art does. Now, this is a, a drawing from the Karcheri uh, series, uh, a, a large series with a very, very moving um, uh, etchings that, that show, uh, in a way, impossible, impossible buildings. You, you see here, uh, you know, Gian Battista Piranesi, he engraved his name on this, uh, uh, you know, big, uh, big stone. This, uh, the Karcher in Invenzione series is, is a series that uh, uh, is particularly relevant, in my opinion, to our time, because uh, uh, it connects on one hand with our grandiose uh, dreams, on the other hand with perhaps our pessimism. Uh, there, are, there are even, um, you know, elements of uh, deconstruction here. Well, any ruin has, uh, uh, you know, a so-called built-in uh, deconstruction. Uh, but this, uh, these works in particular are very visceral. They are dark, but you also see the penetration of light equally dramatic. Uh, so there is this tension uh, the, between light and shadow. Uh, and uh, um, it's the human drama in a way. It's the human life in general. It doesn't matter in what century you lived or live. Uh, you say, why did he do it? Why did he, because these are creations of his mind. He didn't look at actual buildings and drew what he saw. No, these were creations of his own mind. And uh, they, they are very moving. Uh, 
indeed. And why why are they called carceries? Well, you know, is this the way a, a prison look look like? Uh, is it the way it looks like? I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's clearly a psychological prison. It's an inner prison. Also, interestingly, I would say that, and I don't know if you know, uh, one or two years ago, I read that uh, Frank Gehry, of all people, proposed that Cy Arc, the celebrated uh, architecture school in Los Angeles, uh, a theme for a project by the students. And that was with prisons. Why did Frank Gehry think of prisons? Because pr uh, probably Gehry within himself He's pessimistic too. It's very possible. Uh, the man who tried to free architecture from many conventions and dogmas and so on, he probably realizes that uh, uh, we are somehow all continuously prisoners of the inner prison, just like Piranesi, Gian Battista Piranesi was. But the formal ex expression is different today, and we are going to show later works by someone else who, who might cons consider some kind of a contemporary Piranesi, and I talked about him uh, um, some other times. Anyway, this is still uh, uh, Giovanni Battista Piranesi, and today is his birthday. If he lived, he would have been 301 years old today. Uh, uh, he actually lives. Uh, he is 301 uh, years old today. He didn't die. Piranesi didn't die. Somebody said that a person dies twice when he or she dies, uh, you know, physically and when everybody stops talking about him or her. Well, we didn't stop talking about Piranesi. Thus, he's still alive. We are, we are indeed very fragile, very vulnerable, and art is probably the only way through which we can attempt to transgress death. Even if, even if, even this is a, a, an illusion, but it's a beautiful illusion and without it, I think life would be uh, uh, severely damaged. I wish there are architects today who make an architecture, you know, build an architecture equally moving. Uh, and there are very few who actually succeed, uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm afraid. Now, it's, you would say it's much easier to, to draw and to etch than to build. And I would agree. I mean, it's easier in the sense that when you draw, you can do it alone. But when you build a building, you cannot do it uh, alone. You cannot build such a building. Uh, alone. It's impossible. Okay, so now I have here in this uh, presentation, and uh, I, I apologize today, I'm, I'm agitated and I'm not truly prepared to pay homage, maybe because uh, I'm very affectionate towards Piranesi. When I made this presentation, uh, I prepared it for, uh, I don't know, one, two years ago, or even three years ago, I introduced this futurist uh, painting here and uh, I forgot why uh, I could speculate now why, uh, you know, uh, and then and then after this futurist uh, painting, I show uh, images of cosmos, of planets, and here again, I forgot exactly, I guess I wanted to show, um, I guess, at that time, I wanted to show the, the smallness of who we are. I mean, small, uh, uh, talking in uh, dimensional terms, in physical terms. You know, in this cosmos, we are really uh, extremely, extremely fragile and small. We are, we are, we are literally blades of grass. And, uh, you know, look, the, the Earth, where is the Earth? It's a very, very tiny, uh, almost uh, uh, impossible to observe a uh, little dot there on, on, uh, on the sky. That's the Earth. And we are on that Earth. And we imagine the Earth is immense. It's not immense, but it's immense compared to us. And yet, look, in cosmos, it's almost nothing. But on this nothingness we call Earth, 
incredible beauties generated by by uh, by artists, by musicians, by writers, who are themselves blades of grass. That's what they are. Uh, this is a this is a strange uh, uh, engraving or drawing by Johannes Eaton, the professor at Bauhaus. Um, well, he was for about two, three years, and then Walter Gropius uh, banished him. Uh, they had, I imagine, uh, differences of opinion about education. But what is strange about this uh, uh, rather, you know, rather naive uh, drawing or yeah, uh, uh, graphic work is its title. It's called The House of the White Man. I always ask myself, why? Why did he call this the house of the white man? Uh, uh, and um, I'm mean, not sure if Johannes Eaton was uh, critical towards the white man, but we, if you consider the cubes, uh, you know, uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's uh, their holes, you know, cubical in themselves, you kind of see the rationalist uh, attitude vis-a-vis vis-a-vis uh, -vis architecture today. And uh, there is something discouraging for me in this. If this is the best, I mean, the, if this is the house of the white man, then I would rather not be a white man, if you ask me. Images of, uh, I don't know, I, do, I really don't know why I put this here, but I guess it's about, if somehow when we draw a line, when we place a brick above another brick, when we build a building, perhaps we should not forget Piranesi, perhaps we should not forget Cosmos, perhaps we should not forget how tiny the Earth is, perhaps we should not forget that we are extremely, extremely small dots on this extremely, extremely small planet we call the Earth. This is a, a manifesto, I think, of the uh, flux uh, movement. I don't know why I place it here. Purge the world of bourgeois sickness, intellectual, professional, and commercial commercialized culture. Purge the world of dead art, imitation, artificial art, abstract art, illusionistic art, mathematical art. Purge the world of Euro Europeanism. Uh, promote a revolutionary flood and tide in art, promote living art, anti-art, promote non-art really, reality to be grasped by all peoples, not only critics, dilettantes, and professionals. Yeah, I think this was the manifesto. I forgot the name of, uh, of the artist who wrote it. But I do think that we need this energy that the artist, the genuine artist, wherever he is, and he usually is in the gutter, to provoke us, to epate la bourgeoisie, to, to, to create the new, to even, uh, you know, uh, slam the door on us or even slap us because, because I think very often we are just prisoners of that inner prison and, uh, and, and we, cannot, we cannot break the door because we are afraid. And uh, in a way, uh, you know, th this is what it is in our own soul, in our own imagination. I don't know who generated this image and for what reason, but somehow in the threat that I see here, and it is obviously a threat, uh, I, 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 I feel Piranesi can rescue me or us. Um, this is a proposal, I think, for a, a new Guggenheim Museum. Yes, in, uh, in Helsinki, uh, there was a competition for a new Guggenheim Museum in, in Finland, in Helsinki. And somebody proposed this. Can you can you imagine? Uh, it would have been uh, again that big, 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 big stone or rock or name it as you want. What is its meaning? Well, in a way, I think it it it, it kind of connects with Piranesi, you know, because the irrational is real. We cannot contest the irrational. It exists. It exists within us, within our minds, within our soul. It exists, it is in us, and this irrational uh, at times erupts, just as it, it erupted in the Carceri d'Invenzione series of, of, of Piranesi. Now, again, I continue with this, you know, I, I really don't know what, what, what I wanted to say then, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
earth. Where is the earth here? Because I don't see it. It's, it's, it's so small that I, I, I don't see it. Anyway, uh, let's move forward. The Milky Way. And, and you know, I mean, where is the earth in the Milky Way? You know, uh, well, better, maybe, maybe it's better not to think about these matters. Maybe, I, I don't know. You get dizzy and you get anxious and we don't, we, we don't want that. The Milky, well, the Milky Way, I guess it's just that red little dot there. In, I, I don't know what's going on here, but whatever it is going on, this is about the, the infinity outside of the, the inner prison. And is it a prison itself? I don't know. I don't know. Now, Frederick Kisler, I, I don't know very well either why I introduced Frederick Kisler here, but let's go through him. He was born in uh, former, he was part of, I have a monograph on Kisler uh, from the Whitney Museum of Modern Art in New York, where he says a Romanian architect. He was born in Chernowitz, but he didn't recognize it. He always declared he was Austrian, uh, an Austrian American uh, architect, designer, whatever. Uh, but he lived also in Bucharest, he knew Romanian, and I think he had Romanian citizenship towards a magical architecture. I oppose to the mysticism of Hygiene, which is the superstition of functional architecture. The realities of a magical architecture rooted in the totality of the human being and not in the blessed or accursed parts of this being, something we totally forget. We are prisoners, not of the, well, it is an inner prison, the functional architecture. And we don't think of a magical architecture, which has to do with, with the totality of the human being. No, no, we are so trapped in those narrow understandings of what architecture should be. Come on, come on. Should be from whom comes this should? From Neufer? No more walls. Well, of course, uh, P Piranesi wanted to break the walls. Well, Nature broke them, you know, time broke them. He depicted broken walls. Uh, Kisler also wanted to, to break away the walls, to, 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 to express his freedom somehow. So that's why he wrote No More Walls. Here he is with his endless house, which is his most, most famous uh, project. Uh, and, uh, you know, sketches uh, leading to, to it or, uh, you know, made afterwards, I don't know. Anyway, it was not built, but maybe one day it will be built by other people. Elevations, uh, plans, uh, sections, and so on. It's a famous house, although it was not built. And this is my point. You can draw architecture, and even if it doesn't get built, if it has something to say, it will say. It will say it, and it will be relevant for architecture. It doesn't necessarily have to be built. Ideally, yes, perhaps it should be built. Also, although today, I mean, in our time when we are confronted with uh, climate change and with all kinds of crises, perhaps we should build less because the more we build, the more we amplify the pollution, the more we change the climate and so on. But I don't think we can stand still. Uh, architects have to build, I guess, and uh, look at poor uh, Frederick Kisler inside the model of his endless house scribbling there on the walls uh, like a kid on his knees. And he has a certain age here. Is he himself in an inner prison? Is he inside the carcere d'invenzione? Perhaps he is. And he tries to exit uh, through imagination, through artistic works, through scribbling, scribbling the walls of his own cave, the inner cave. Look at him, he's inside the inner cave the inner cave that Giovanni Battista Piranesi depicted in very moving uh, carcere d'invenzione. So what is new in the world? Uh, Friedrich Kisler did this, uh, you know, around 250 years after Giovanni Battista Piranesi made his uh, etchings. Uh, okay, Kisler, Kisler's double, double vision machine. These are very movie drawings. And uh, I don't know very well in what way they might relate to, to Piranesi, but I included them in this uh, presentation and I'll show them to you quickly. Uh, a very different uh, graphic imagination, a very different kind of uh, artist and architect, but 
Here we also see turmoil. Is the turmoil a vision? The vision of someone who who goes through life not like a duck in the water without uh, uh, wetting uh, its uh, wings. Uh, a man like us who suffered, who struggled, who tries to understand, to make sense of uh, whatever is around himself and within himself. The double vision. I don't know what the double vision is. Is it a vision towards the outside, but also a vision towards the inside? I don't know. But the important thing is through these fragile drawings, and these are fragile drawings because they are done with pencil on paper, man can subsist, can even survive somehow miraculously. Friedrich Kiesler died, but we still talk about him. So what do we see here? We see the same turmoil like in the etchings of uh, Giovanni Battista uh, Piranesi. It's the same turmoil, but expressed differently uh, uh, graphically, that's all. And what is this? Is the world that, that, that Piranesi himself tried to break down. And if he didn't break it down, nature broke it down and Piranesi etched it. So in a way, it's nothing new in the world. Here, the, the, the language, the graphic language is more abstract and more diagrammatic. But in essence, it's about the same thing. Look at here. It's a, it's a tortured soul. It is, it is a tormented soul that tries to break the world, you know, in a way to ruin it. And uh, so, you know, we, we can see parallels between someone like Piranesi and someone like Kistler. Uh, and we are going to see some parallels with someone else. This is a cinema he, he built. Uh, this is actually the book I have where it says clearly black on white that he was an American, uh, a Romanian uh, architect, uh, born, born in Romania. He was born in Chernowitz. Now Chernowitz is part of Ukraine, but uh, uh, when he was born, was part of, um, well, of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and then became part of Romania. This is uh, an exhibition uh, he designed for the Surrealists. I'm not sure if in New York or in Paris, but he did the design for this exhibition. Now the shrine of book, because you know even the etchings and uh, the graphic works of Piranesi, they they can be well they are in a way books, and uh, you know they as an artist as an intellectual as an architect who takes his role seriously the book is very important. So he designed the shrine of book in uh, in Jerusalem in uh, in uh, in. Uh, is it in, Jer yes, in Jerusalem? I thought it might have been in uh, Tel Aviv, uh, in, uh, in Israel. Uh, in my opinion, his graphic work is, uh, and even his models are more interesting than the built work. But the very idea to build a shrine for books is something I think worth, um, uh, worth uh, accepting, if not uh, uh, applauding. There is a black wall here. I hope you are going to see it because uh, the, the, the world that we saw in his engravings, we are going to see also in the built work. This is the image of the Shrine of Book within the, I mean, an, you know, an interior uh, view of the Shrine of Books. Yeah, here is uh, on the right, the black wall. I don't know that, I don't know what he meant with this, but it's kind of uh, similar also in its silhouette or its dimensions or proportions with the one we saw in his, um, in his uh, drawings. Anyway, now we also, because talking about uh, Piranesi, we also have to talk a little bit about Lebia Suds, whom I consider the, the contemporary Piranesi. He died in 2012, but the way he drew and what he drew, in a way, for me, is very similar to, to Piranesi. Look, you know, distracted uh, old buildings, uh, ruins, uh, war, conflict. Uh, he he drew unbelievably, and I I knew Lebia Suits personally. We even were somewhat uh, in a in a in a in a friendship uh, relationship, maybe more than somewhat. Uh, I met him many times, and uh, he was a, a volcano. I don't know if you know, but Tadawando uh, Tadawando declared that he wanted to do an architecture which inside was uh, like a Piranesi, meaning I translate like a volcano, and outside like Joseph Albers, the Bauhaus artist 
who um, had a very Apollonian, uh, um, you know, uh, graphic work with squares within squares, with, uh, you know, kind colors and so on. So inside Piranesi, the, the Carcere d'Invenzione, the volcano, the, the burning uh, of the walls, the fall of, uh, of empires and uh, thick stone walls, and outside uh, an Apollonian uh, peace in a way. This is what Tadao Ando declared he wanted to, his architecture to be. Here we see the volcano and he and the Lebia Suits even has a series called, uh, uh, called uh, earthquake architecture, well, derived from earthquake. I hope I have some images here. Uh, of course, there is death here. There is war, as you can see. It's, he's, he lost his father in war in the second, well, a little bit after the second world war, I think. Um, who worked for the military. So there was also something autobiographical in his uh, obsession with war. He even declared that architecture is war and war is architecture. Hey, look, war and architecture. This is the cover of the famous series pamphlet architecture, which was started by uh, Stephen Hall with his own money. He was publishing, but now is published by Princeton Architectural Press. Pamphlet architecture number 15, war and architecture. Uh, these are all the uh, images of, from his work. This is, a, this is a, a more, well, recent until he died in 2012. He wrote this, um, this uh, poem, Resist. And this I wish many uh, uh, students in architecture and architects read. Maybe at times he is not, uh, he's a little bit, uh, uh, I mean, inevitably he was subjective, but then we read it. Resist whatever seems inevitable. Resist people who seem invincible. Resist the embrace of those who, who have lost. Resist the flattery of those who have won. Resist any idea that contains the word algorithm. <laughs> it's amusing, he seemed to be an adversary of this world. Resist the impulse to draw blob-like shapes. Resist the desire to travel to Paris in the spring. Resist the desire to move to Los, An Los Angeles anytime. Resist the idea that architecture is a building. Resist the idea that architecture can save the world. Resist the hope that you'll get that big job. Resist getting big jobs. Resist the suggestion that you can only read Derrida in French. Resist taking the path of least resistance. Resist the influence of the appealing. Resist the desire to make a design based on the piece of music. Resist the growing, I don't know about that, but anyway, I continue. Resist the growing conviction that they are right, that they are right. Resist the nagging feeling that they will win. Resist the idea that you need a client to make architecture. Resist the temptation to talk fast. Resist anyone who asks you to design only the visible part. Resist the idea that drawing by hand is passé. Resist any assertion that the work of Frederick Kisler is passé. Resist the impulse to open an office. Resist believing that there is an answer to every question. Resist believing that the result is the most important thing. Resist the demand that you prove your ideas by building them. Resist people who are satisfied. Resist the idea that architects are master builders. Resist accepting honors from those you do not respect. Resist the panicky feeling that you are alone. Resist hoping that next year will be better. Resist the assertion that architecture is a service profession. Resist the foregone conclusion that they have already won. Resist the impulse to go back to square one. Resist believing that there can be architecture without architects here. I disagree with him. Resist accepting your fate. Resist making models from chicken wire. Resist people who tell you to resist, meaning himself. And I like that he is self-derogatory. Resist the, su su the suggestion that you can do what you really want later. Resist any idea that contains the word interface. Resist the feeling of obligation to subscribe to Domus. Resist the idea that architecture is an investment. Resist the feeling that you must explain everything. 
resist the claim that history is concerned with the past, resist the innuendo that you must be cautious. I would agree with him. History, true history, is not about the, the past that passed, but it's about the past that didn't pass. Resist the opinion that it was an accident. Resist the judgment that it is only valid if you can do it again. Only if you, only valid if you can do it again. Resist believing that architecture is about designing things. Resist the implications of security. Resist writing what they wish you would write. Resist assuming the locus of power is elsewhere. Resist believing that anyone knows what will actually happen. Resist the accusation that you have missed the point. Resist all claims on your autonomy. Resist the indifference of adversaries. And I would say even of, any, of, 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 of uh, friends. Resist the ready acceptance of friends. And uh, <laughs> perhaps we should also resist uh, the, the non-acceptance of friends. Resist the thought that life is simple after all. Resist the belated feeling that you should seek forgiveness. Resist the desire to move to Berlin. Resist the notion that you should never compromise. Resist any thought that contains the word should. <laughs> Well, he kind of uses himself. Resist the lessons of architecture that has already succeeded. Resist the idea that architecture expresses something. Resist the temptation to do it just one more time. Resist the belief that architecture influences behavior. Well, <laughs> sometimes he talks nonsense, but uh, I love it nevertheless. Resist any idea that equates architecture and property. Resist the tendency to repeat yourself resist that feeling of utter exhaustion and he ends and I, I imagine he himself was utterly exhausted when he wrote this and maybe before he wrote this and maybe after he wrote this but and this in romanian means not far away from us i discovered some ruins near where i was living in titan in in uh, titan in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, that region of, of, uh, of bucharest when I, where I was living in a, in a small uh, studio in a block of flats. And I'll show you these ruins, not far away from us. Nu departe de noi. Vis-a-vis uh, -vis Dedeman, uh, a huge uh, triumphalist uh, store. It's a very interesting uh, place. I wish these ruins would be preserved and I wish someone would do a project there or something. I wish they would be saved. I don't know what it was there. I think it was some kind of a pharmaceutical uh, compound, some kind of a buildings, buildings uh, that were built, uh, in, you know, in communism uh, or socialism uh, for the medical industry. I, I think, and they are in ruin now. But there are many, and they are very moving, in my opinion. They are left deserted, and I took some pictures, you know, uh, and you are going to see them by the way of Piranesi. And maybe Piranesi, if he saw them, he would have liked them, maybe. So we have similar beauty all around us. We just have to see it. As Confucius said, beauty there is everywhere, but uh, not everybody sees it. Well, I don't know. I mean, some people might not see beauty in this, but uh, I, I was very attracted. I even endangered my life because I entered this um, uh, plot of land and at one moment there was a dog who didn't seem to be very friendly towards me and uh, I, I was a little bit afraid because it is a wild, um, yes, in Bucharest and it's not far away. I, in fact, you can arrive there by subway. Um, it, it's, it's amazing. You, you, you can, I mean, these things, you know, could be given a new life somehow, if not through etchings a la Piranesi, then in some other form, maybe an, a student could make a, a diploma work in the sixth year or something, you know, um, as you can see, the, 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 the graffiti artists uh, uh, were there to, you know, I mean, I showed the very skillful, uh, the magnificent the etchings of Piranesi. Now I show, you know, graffiti works by anonymous uh, young uh, uh, I call them artists, yes, artists, protesting in their own ways, through colors, through shapes, through, uh, 
they would, in a way, they were animating these ruins with the graphic work. And then, of course, is the animation of nature, which, uh, which uh, when the spring comes, I forgot when I took these pictures in the spring or in the fall. Anyway, I see some kind of a relationship between even these, uh, you know, thin branches of uh, vegetation and the nervousness of the graffiti work. All in all, it's about the struggle for life that human beings wage, uh, you know, the war in a way uh, on themselves, uh, with themselves, with the others, with society, with nature, even with ruins, you name it, with dead man, whatever. It's, it's the continuous struggle and it doesn't change. It doesn't matter. We are in the 18th century with Giovanni Battista Piranesi, or we are in the 21st century in Titan uh, Bucharest. So with this, I will end this presentation. Uh, and uh, because this is my belief, history or the past is relevant or are relevant only in as much as in a way they didn't pass. Because if they passed uh, and they are there safely in the so-called past, uh, they are at, at best, uh, you know, inert objects in uh, our archives. But a truly uh, significant past is present, is with us, and Piranesi is with us. And these ruins somehow, you know, in their misery and in, in the desolation, perhaps, uh, I don't know, they animated my uh, uh, photographic camera and they animated my spirit. Look, there is even a, an, um, you know, a temple there, you know. Uh, of course, it was not a temple initially, but from far away, you might, you might think this is a temple. Uh, here, I come closer to it. <laughs> I mean, th there is beauty here and I, I really hope that these ruins will be somehow saved and I'm afraid they will not be saved. Look at this. Well, you know, I mean, I really like it. I, I like it. You might say my uh, my something wrong with me, uh, although I only drink buttermilk, but I really like it. I, I, I like everything about it, exactly as it is. I would keep it just as it is, a temple for an unknown god, and not necessarily associated with the pharmaceutical uh, uh, industry, Bucharest. Uh, 2000s, um, well, in the 21st century, I forgot what year uh, uh, was it was when I when I took these pictures. Anyway, by the way, of Piranesi and ruins, we have Piranesi's all around us. We just have to, well, you might say they are not as impressive as the great uh, Roman uh, remains, but uh, it depends. It depends how how you see them. Maybe Piranesi, if he lived in Bucharest, in Titan, in the 21st century, he would have made a series of etchings with, with just uh, what you are looking at right now. Look at that mysterious, poetical little structure there. Now you tell me if the new buildings built uh, and uh, published copiously on uh, design or, uh, design or uh, you know, uh, Arch Daily or Design Boon or whatever are better than this. I don't know. I'm not so convinced. I love it, just as it is. Maybe because I like broken things, because I am broken myself to an extent. I don't know. But I see Piranesi here. I do. And look at the beauty of nature. Eh, wild as it is, a a anarchical nature, yes. And then, uh, you know, the struggling building to survive and uh, mysterious things on the, on the, on the pavement. Uh, I don't know, you know, it, it's, it was a discovery for me. And look, nature is uh, it's not moralistic. Nature gave birth to these fruits, which I don't know where, you know, I don't know exactly what fruit it is, if it is meant to be eaten or not. But aren't they, you know, asserting life, the life of vegetation, the life of nature, uh, uh, in a way, uh, you know, uh, totally uh, uh, undwarfed by, by the ruins uh, nearby. This is a celebration of life and of light. They grew up because they grew, they developed, they, uh, this outburst of nature is, is magnificent. And it's magnificent because it is, uh, it is uh, nourished and caressed by the solar light. Um, 
Anyway, I, I photograph them and I also photograph the ruins. And look at them, you know, it's the, the Bucharest Acropolis here that nobody talks about, you know, vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the famous, uh, everybody goes to Dedeman to do shopping. I did, uh, I, I, went, I crossed the street and I went here because, because uh, yes, I like ruins and, uh, and I like Piranesi and uh, here I saw there, you see my, my shadow uh fascinated by some i don't know what those species were uh, it's not iron i don't know what it is but you see the unknown the mystery of the unknown is everywhere you just have to see it it's everywhere it really is anyway moving forward towards the end of the presentation uh, and again, I, I, I love these fruits even if they are poisonous or i don't know what they are but uh, I love them because, you know, how come they, from the misery of this uh, ruined uh, land, uh, they, uh, they, they outburst, they, 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 they proclaim life. That's what they do. So we shouldn't actually be afraid of death because it's probably true. And this is another way through which nature renews itself. So in the land of these ruins, you saw the fruits coming upwards. And then the graffiti artist, artist um, uh, younger than me uh, came in and then spread the, the uh, uh, chromatic uh, sprays all over these ruins. Why did they do it? I think unconsciously, they wanted to rescue the ruin from its, uh, uh, from its death. And, uh, and uh, in, their own, in their own way, they did it. I think we should listen uh, to these graffiti artists. They, they are saying something, not just for themselves, but also, also for ourselves. And you might say, this is not Piranesi. This is not masterwork. I don't know. I mean, we have a small Biennale di Venezia right here, you know, uh, across the Dedeman store in Bucharest. Yes, it is. And it is an art that is, in my opinion, alive. Uh, very much so. And so are the ruins. Maybe I'm now turning into an optimist, but uh, you could very well say you are totally mad. And there is no beauty here. It's just desolation and misery and uh, dirt and disorder and chaos and broken things. Yes, they are. But you saw the fruits coming upwards, coming towards light. So uh, the end is not the end. Anyway. By the way of Piranesi, of course, you see the Dedeman store on the right, the one I talked about, is literally across the street from this uh, uh, deserted, uh, deserted land, uh, broken, uh, broken bricks. I even took some of these things home and I made, um, you know, a piece of jewelry, if you can call it so. I lost it uh, and now I regret. But uh, yeah, you just put a string through these things. They are small, you know, like uh, one centimeter and a half long and the diameter, maybe one centimeter or so. Anyway, I don't know what they are, but I love them. I, I really did and, and still do. And I maybe when the spring comes, I'll go back there with the pandemic goes away and I don't risk my life to take the subway. Anyway, moving forward, moving forward. We are the kids that your parents want you about. <laughs> I love this. So the people who drew these um, graffiti works on the walls of these uh, remnants of walls consider themselves the kids that your parents want you about. Very nice. In, in a way, this is, this is a beautiful definition of the artist. The artist is the kid that your parents want you about. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is what the artist is. I, I should remember this. So let me repeat. The artist, and I will include the architect here as well, is the kid that your parents want you about or want you against. Evanzare in Kiriere is for sale. Somebody may, maybe could buy this Acropolis in Bucharest. Uh, beautiful things could be done if we are animated by poetry and imagination. Unfortunately, we are not. Dedeman tri triumphs. Well, I guess Dedeman is necessary too. Anyway, 
hello uh, Piranesi, I am exiting now the this this plot of land and yes yes there is there is garbage there is uh, what can you do you know construction and deconstruction uh, they complement each other and this is what life is about life and death uh, the world the broken world the graffiti artist the garbage they are all together thank you and happy birthday again uh, giovanni Batista Piranesi. Și despre uh, 